Okay, we are here at the um, Arrow Hive Experience Day, and I'm talking here to Alan Emrock, and he's the uh, VP of um, Technology, and we're going to talk some trends in the Wi-Fi world. Yep. Is there going to be a Wi-Fi world in the future, or is that going to be just um, you know just a little thing you're going to manage? No, the Wi-Fi will be the main connectivity indoors probably for the foreseeable future, so you'll always have Wi-Fi. Will there be something after 802.11ax? Probably not. No, you say the end statement. The end statement is here. With the, the end standard, AX is uh, is there. Okay. Because you had gigabit Ethernet to the desktop, yeah. 802.11ax is probably the terminus of most major speed enhancements to Wi-Fi. So, just for anybody who doesn't know Arrowhive, you started in 2006. And what was the big differences between Arrowhive and the other partners? What is your uh, what is your big claim to fame? Uh, Arrowhive pioneered what's called controllerless, which basically meant that it had a centralized management, but it had distributed control and data, which m gave you a much more resilient network. It also meant that you didn't have any choke points or aggregation points in the network, so yeah. it was much more cost effective for customers. Yeah. So everything was cloud from the beginning, and the second thing, you cut out a whole bunch of hardware. You could put a lot of okay. hardware you had mesh networking uh, mm -hmm. from the beginning, and you could uh, much easier uh, architecture networks. Uh. That's correct. Okay. So we're here at the uh, we're here at the experience day, and you basically gave us an overview of what's going to happen. So we already talked about AX. AX, uh, you think it's going to be the standard uh, that's that's going to get there soon? Because a lot of companies have not really jumped on it, and you are really excited about it. Why is it so important? Well, we're a smaller company, so being first means a lot to us, and quite frankly, it means a lot for the kind of customers that want to buy from the leading vendors, the leading technology vendors. Mm -hmm. So the larger companies tend to be a little bit later with the newer technology. So we're about a year ahead of everyone else, and then we have another, uh, how to say it, another group of uh, hardware that will be coming out at the end of the year as well, more AX hardware. Okay. Talk to me about... Um, know why as an enterprise or why a, as a user would be interested in the AX because AC is already so fast and I'm uh, I'm not into speed anymore I'm not, I'm not excited anymore so why would I be interested in AX well speed in AX is just a byproduct what AX is really about is extending battery life on mobile devices Ooh, now you have my interest I mean you, s you said it was you know inspired by Apple and Samsung and LG yeah. and, and, w w and why is the battery life so much better what's happening well most of the previous amendments to Wi-Fi were actually done by the network manufacturers but this one was really driven by the device manufacturers because all the tricks to get more battery life out of AC there weren't any left so they've actually embedded changes to AX that actually allow all kinds of wake on efforts and power saving efforts that was too late to put in AC. When AC was being developed, mobile devices actually weren't as popular. because They were not dominant. Yeah. Now they are, and they took the dominant role in driving AX to market. Okay. So p battery power is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then uh, secondly, I think there's a lot more smart channel management, right? Yeah, it's channel sharing. So what it does is it also, how to say it, almost everybody's on Wi-Fi now. So the new channel sharing you get in, uh, in AX allows high density to be serviced much easier. You don't need the specialized design that you used to need in AC. AX already comes with more capacity channel sharing capabilities to handle high density as a normal. The new normal is high density. Okay. So we have this new standard. You are one of the first to basically go all in uh, in that. And it's going to make my life easier because I have uh, less battery life. And it's going to be m much easier to manage. Mm -hmm. Okay. We all know you because you made hardware. You made less level of, so a level of hardware, but you make hardware, and then you also have some software with it. Now you say we're not a Wi-Fi company anymore. What does that mean? It means that we're shifting completely to cloud management and then machine learning and artificial intelligence. It also means that we're, we're not just managing Arrowhive devices. We'll manage almost anything that through our sensors are machine learning and artificial intelligence reachable through standard network protocols and visualize those in relation to our network as well. Okay, so you call it bare metal. Anything which is bare metal, which has anything to do with Wi-Fi, you will manage it. Uh, not only Wi-Fi, but eventually switches and routers as well. Okay, yeah, you will also manage uh, you know, my, my 4G or 5G devices? If it they're IP accessible, we'll see your devices out in the uh, cellular market as well and be able to collect data on that, yes. Okay. Now, talk about management. I, I normally hate management. I really hate to design all my network. I've it's always way too much work. How 
first, if I put the network together, how, how much easier will that be with your tools? Uh, well, very, I mean, that's actually one of our claims of fame is simplicity. Mm -hmm. So increasingly, you'll only have to do the most basics of configurations, and then the ML-AI combination will actually self-optimize uh, the network for you. Okay. Great. Okay. So th th this it will become smarter. Mm -hmm. It will help me to configure it a little bit more intelligent, and it will be less work, and uh, even though I have more complexity because of all these devices, which are going to increase. Uh, absolutely. You'll even see the network become self-segmenting based on device's behavior and based on device type, even user profiles, you'll see the network become self-segmenting. Okay, what does it mean? I have a university, I have 50,000 people, and uh, you know, thousands uh, um, you know, of these, uh, of these uh, devices which uh, basically receive it. How, how will that automatic uh, segmenting work? Well, a perfect example is say you have that university with 50,000 students, you also have professors, you have staff, you have janitorial and everything else. An IT administrator can pick uh, representative um, clients in those groups and define that as a student. Mm -hmm. And then the machine learning AI capability of our network will then identify the other 49,000 students based on the application. Ooh, I don't need to put in a uh, directory anymore. It will recognize it will that recognize by them through behavior. Yes. And then it will also recognize, say, janitorial staff. You say, this is a janitor. We watch that janitor's behavior over a couple of weeks, and then we'll be able to recognize the other janitors and actually self-segment that way. Yeah, the, the networks are increasingly intelligent, and it's all about behavior and then an, and associating common behaviors. It needs to, because I mean, if I see it managing networks, it is just an insult for people's intelligence, and they have better things to do. Now, all still, these university of fifty thousand people, there's always a bunch of people who do all kinds of weird, mm -hmm. weird, very interesting stuff. Uh, how will the network protect me against that uh, kind of creativity? Well, it's always a matter of time. So, if you're taking a look at that population over time. The again, the behavior that becomes very uh, anomalous or very, very different from everyone else can be self-alerting as well. Mm -hmm. So then that would be alerted to the administrator and maybe automatically quarantined if it's already very bad behavior. So we need that. You also have uh, your own autopilot. What is that? The autopilot is, I think, anyone who's managed a network over time usually gets the network to the level of what they want it to be. We have an autopilot function that's coming out that once you press it, we'll lock that network and won't allow anyone to make any kind of changes or deviations to have it negatively impact performance or client experience or something like that. Okay, so that is, okay, so that is the autopilot. It will automatically keep my network updated. Now, what about the AeroHive? You now make hardware and you do management, and uh, now you say, hey, we have this great uh, new generation of AX uh, supported tools coming out, so hardware is still important for the next period, but you say we're going to manage anything. So what is the future of AeroHive, and what's your business model? The future of AeroHive is really we're turning into a cloud management ML AI company. We'll continue to make hardware. There's probably a couple years down the road where hardware will be far less important. At the end of this year, if we execute to our business plan, we'll be 50% software revenue, 50% hardware. If you compare that to two years ago, we were about 90% hardware, 10% software. So we keep moving down that path to be much more software. Okay. Software is eating it at too. Now you showed me inside a little plug, mm -hmm. you know, it's hardware, but you show me I can plug it into the uh, power supply. Uh, mm -hmm. What does that thing do? Uh, it's a little enterprise plug. Oh yeah, here. grab it there. Uh, Let me show me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's the first. Uh, it's the first one which is uh, you can put into your dryer, right? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the CE or the European Union actually yeah. made us do a tumble test. I've never seen that before. Um, I was a new test that they decided to do, and you have to literally put it in the dryer and tumble it like 25 times to still have it operate. Um, and we so yeah. Europe is uh, Europe is pretty strict, yeah, and uh, really yeah, because yeah. normally CE is always said as a joke, it's really not much difficult. But I've never heard about this. But uh, you can say that Europe really is uh, not only GDPR, but also is tumbling hardware. Yeah. But okay, so what does this little thing do? Well, what that does is ceiling mounted access points are usually not enough. There's always a dead spot. There's always some special use case, and we've decided to create an enterprise grade pluggable that's not only services clients, but is a sensor as well. So you could literally take that anywhere, including a remote worker. So if you check into a hotel in, in Thailand on business, when you put your credentials into the room, that access point would also be able to have the same credentials for the room and then connect back to your corporate network. So it allows you to take your network anywhere in the world and it tracks any devices that, that connects back into the corporate network and associates. So the printer and corporate, you could print through 
when you connect that in a room and you say so your own nice little corporate network uh, hotspot so and, and also uh, you can put it anywhere and it will make uh, it will uh, be in the mesh networking too yes you, you're absolutely correct it'll mesh yeah, and so we know this in the consumer uh, space but now you've made it for the enterprise space correct yes we have yeah now question Wi-Fi really sucks <laughs> at the consumer level yeah. I mean you have a nice mesh, mesh networking you have a nice everything is cloud why not move into the consumer sector and help us out there uh, the consumer sector is a har is a very much a hardware centric model, and we're going towards a software centric model. Yeah, but I mean, manage uh, you, you you said you you would manage any kind of hardware, so you could basically also help us to to manage all these different routers and switches and access networks, and just from a con just from a software point of view. Well, I won't rule it out, but it's probably not in our plan for the next couple of years. You're innovative. You always think ahead. Well, we have a product called Connect that actually does allow the consumer to have no license and get basic if they go to our Cloud Connect, mm -hmm. which those devices are compatible with. And we have a, we have a couple hundred thousand devices on there right now. Okay. It's more popular in places like India, quite frankly, Indonesia, and some of these price-sensitive markets that we use the Connect. It's actually uh, we're doing very well in Ireland, of all places, um, in the education space where they're using that uh, that lesser license to actually go on there almost a yeah. almost a residential type of license yeah Arrowhive is doing really good in Holland right yes yes there's actually in Holland this is our largest uh, market share of any country in the world yeah. is in Holland. So we're open to your stuff so maybe yeah. also put a little bit more uh, effort into the consumer part of it <laughs> hey you've worked also for uh, tiny little companies like Cisco and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff how will they do with uh, competing uh, you know to go to software not hardware and to all these new standards, what do you think? Uh, what is the what are the chances for Arrowhive compared to all the other ones? Well, we're we're obviously a lot smaller than compared to say a Cisco or, or some of the Juniper, but we can shift to software faster than they can because we are smaller. The larger you are, the more dependent you are on the on the revenue, and the more percentage of that revenue is hardware. It's hard to shift, but a smaller company, we can move much much faster. Thanks for coming to Amsterdam. Appreciate Thank it. You. So this is the latest on uh, Wi-Fi in the enterprise world, and a lot of these trends will also come to the consumer world. So I think it's uh, really s interesting to follow Aerohype wherever they go.